Uh, my name's uh, Colin Adams. I'm in the Mathematics and Statistics Department at Williams College. I've uh, been here for 25 years. Um, <clears throat> so the thing I wanted to talk about was uh, what I see our role as faculty members in the classroom, what I see our, our um, purpose. And I really think that, that it's twofold, and there's a lot of focus on one of those two aspects and not as much on the other. And the, the twofold purpose is, number one, when we're teaching a class, whatever it is, cohomology, you name it, we're supposed to get across this certain body of material, this, this information that we're supposed to impart to the students. But number two, what we really want to do is we want to excite those students about the material. We want to excite them about, about mathematics or about whatever field it is that we're teaching. And I think that is maybe the more important role. And, and yes, we have a certain amount of material that we're using um, that they should learn, that we're using to get them interested. But if we get them excited and if we get them interested, in fact, they're going to learn much, much, much more than they ever would if they're simply just learning a body of material for the sake of having that background. Um, I think it's very interesting. There was a study that was done at Cornell University by some psychologists who were very interested in how different <coughs> approaches to teaching can have an impact on how students perceive that teaching. And in particular, they were very worried about the impact of student course surveys and how easily those are influenced by simply changing just a little bit the way the professor teaches. And the way they did their study was they had a professor who taught a particular class to 200 some students every, every year. And um, in the fall, this professor taught the course the way they had always taught it. And then over the winter break, this person was trained by someone who um, was in media and uh, sort of understood how to make yourself seem more exciting, how to use more uh, hand motions, how to, to show more enthusiasm. And then this same professor taught the same class the next semester. And, and then they looked at the student course survey results for these two semesters. And ultimately what they found was that the students rated the class much, much higher and the professor much, much higher in the spring than they did in the fall. Um, they did not see a difference in terms of the amount of material learned, um, but the students even rated the book higher in the, in the spring rather than in the fall. And the conclusion of these people who are writing the study was, therefore, this demonstrates that student course surveys are invalid. The fact that they could be so easily influenced by such minor things as changing the presentation style of the faculty member. And you know, that wasn't really my conclusion in having read about this study. My conclusion was that of those two groups of students, which group is more likely to go on in the field? It's actually the second group, because the second group is, has seen a much more enthusiastic and excited professor as far as they're perceiving it. And they, in fact, then think to themselves, this is a field that I, th I find interesting. And so I think, um, you know, not that I'm suggesting that the way to excite students is simply to talk louder and use uh, larger hand motions, but I do think it's really important to get across the enthusiasm and the excitement that we feel for our fields. Now, there's a variety of ways you can do that. One of the things I do is I do little research blurbs at the beginning of each of my classes where I talk about what's going on in my field. I'll talk about the research I'm doing. I'll talk about the research other people are doing. And I think that's a great way to, to introduce students to the upper levels of a field. Um, I go a little bit further, not so much in the classroom, but when I lecture, uh, when I give talks around the country, um, I will dress up as a character. I, I have a character, Mel Slugbait, that I do. I have another character, Sir Randolph Bacon, that I do. And I actually present what I believe to be extremely exciting mathematics, but in a very, very silly manner. And the truth of the matter is that, that these characters, Mel Slugbait and Sir Randolph Bacon, actually get many more invitations to speak than I ever do. Um, and it's just because there isn't a lot of this sort of thing being done in math. And from my perspective, the reason I'm doing it is because I do believe that this mathematics is absolutely beautiful, but most people are never going to take the time to hear about it. If you're willing to dress up as a character and be silly and have a whole lot of jokes, people are much more likely to come to the talk, which they do, and then, and then hopefully they will see how beautiful the mathematics is, and they'll become intrigued, and they will then become lifelong learners. So I think it's really, really important to be thinking about that aspect. How do I excite my students about mathematics? And incidentally, I, I should mention this, I do not dress up as a character in my classes. I, I would not recommend that. That's really not a good idea.